corner just a bit here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and let's talk about the challenge. You can speak to this better than anybody I know. Mm -hmm. The kind of challenges you as a disabled person and others face in the entertainment industry. And you mm -hmm. know it from personal experience and you're still, I'm still facing, facing it. it every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, as much as our industry would like the world to think that they are inclusive and open-minded, we're still fighting a pretty brutal battle here mm. and we shouldn't have to be, no, I mean, no. we shouldn't have to hide that I have a limp. I shouldn't have to worry about, oh no, I'm going to have to wear a brace today because my ankles hurting really badly. But if they see that, you know, I shouldn't have to explain my situation medically no. to anyone no. to get a job. I shouldn't have to prove what I've been through. We, we have a long way to go. And I love and thank every person who's ever opened up um, a door and who has given us work, we still have a long way to go. Mm. And, you know, it's hard to watch, you know, newcomers in the industry, no offense to any of them, people do get lucky. Um, but I call it luck. If you're new in the business and you've suddenly just landed a show, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and there's yeah. a lot of people that fought for many, many years who have not gotten lucky. And there are a lot of people who are fighting and training and fighting and training and haven't had any opportunities. And, you know, a perfect example of that, and forgive me, anyone who doesn't want their name mentioned, but when you're in the public eye, here you, here we go. A perfect example of that is um, Troy Kotzer, who just won the Oscar for CODA. He has been in the industry for decades, mm. fighting to get work. If you go on his IMDb, and look only from what came before CODA and not what came after. Before CODA, he was still battling always to try to get a job. He, huh. he has, you know, work effort put out is not translated in the work into the work he got, if that makes sense. He should okay. have had way more credits, way more income. He should have been thriving because his talent is so huge. And finally, hmm. he got a role where he was able to show that. And then everyone's like, wow, he got an Academy Award. Well, yes, he was always talented. Why didn't we let him in more doors sooner? Why did we oh. make him wait 30 oh. years to be seen? You know, some of us have still never gotten those real opportunities. And we, we need to change that because there's a lot of talent in this community and a lot of talent and a lot of depth and a lot of training and a lot of skill. And I hope if anyone is in our industry watching this, they'll do everything they can to open more doors because we shouldn't have to fight harder than everybody else. No. We're already fighting no. harder than everybody else. Just you know, to survive. Who get equal opportunity? Yeah. Equal, equal. And you shouldn't have to, you know, finally get a role 30 years later and then get an Oscar to have finally people open up and give you some opportunity. It shouldn't take that kind of a battle. No. He was no. a very talented actor for many years. Yeah. It, and it yeah. takes years of training and work and work on the stage and all those things. It takes all that. I encourage all the people with disabilities who come to me to train, 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 and never stop training because I know what they're going to be up against. I know mm -hmm. what they're going to be up against. Um, and I just hope they'll bring their best to the table with every opportunity they do get. And I hope the industry will start to look at the ones who've kind of been left out, the ones who were here for decades and still haven't had their opportunity. I hope the industry will start to open doors to them and then have a little bit of patience and empathy for the fact that they haven't had the opportunities to audition, that they've been ridiculed when they've gone into rooms and let them have a real shot. Give them a safe place to play, you know? Oh, and oh. when they're well, coming into this, make it safe. Yeah. I mean, you, you've been ridiculed. I have. And, and um, I can't even believe how meanly you've been treated disrespectfully. And, and, and that's from the little that I know. 
and yet you keep it, it doing hurts it. me every time I even think about it and I always sit there like that like that child going if they only knew if mm -hmm. they only knew how hard I work just to be able to come in this room then maybe they wouldn't be worried about how I'm walking you know I've said that in my first interview and in other ones if they only knew what this child went through and if we could see everybody if we could look at every human being and see the child inside of them that has hopes and dreams oh, and oh. wants to live their dreams while they're still yeah. here and just give them a fair shot you know and yeah and yeah. maybe stop judging people on the surface you know it's the oldest saying in the world you know don't judge a book by its cover and hey all kinds of different covers are great you know <laughs> that's for sure just, just no, the cover. there's a human being and a heart and a yeah. soul and a mind and and we all we want a shot that. and we all want to live our dreams yeah yeah no i mean it and i uh, talking about that little child that is so critical yeah. if we could all just think about that and look at that person and say their dreams their desires their talents um and and what it takes to persevere it's it shouldn't be the way it is you know it's and go back to another old saying the the golden rule treat others the way you want to be treated exactly treat you know? others the way you want to be treated and i've often you know i wouldn't i wouldn't say i always i definitely didn't know how to handle it when i was young and i've mm -hmm. navigated through it through the years and i've learned a lot the hard way but i have come to this conclusion um if you wouldn't want to be treated the way you're treating me or if you wouldn't want your daughter treated the way you're treating me if you wouldn't want your mm -hmm. child who could walk out and get sick at any moment a car accident anything can change the game for anyone in a second and in that yep. second are you still going to see your child as a human being are you still going to love them are you going to still care about them even if they've lost a leg or they've gone to war and lost a limb um, <sighs> Are you going to still care about them if they're a victim of a violent crime that leaves them with a challenge? I think you will. I think you will still care about them. And yeah. I try to ask people to think about someone as if they are their your daughter, your sister, your mom, your 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 child, someone you love. Mm -hmm. Will you still love them if they end up with a challenge? I think you will. So yeah. why are we? Yeah. It's a human condition. I think it that's is. why people are so afraid. We get the humanity yeah. and they're afraid of that part because they're maybe afraid they wouldn't be able to survive it. But I got news for you. You'd be surprised yeah. at the strength no, you find when you have to. Yeah. We've got to, uh, we've got to start trying to understand and celebrate our humanness. You've yes. said that several yeah, times. We're all yeah. humans. We are. We not respect maybe we don't necessarily agree but that's okay we can still respect and accept and we can still listen you know yes very so right much. there because it's the listening you know even if you're having resistance and you don't want to hear what somebody has to say or you don't want to hear what they're struggling with even if you don't want to that's the time to take a deep breath and just listen and let them tell you what they're dealing with or what they're mm. going through because you might be be given in that moment the greatest gift in that moment when someone is really struggling if you're the one who can open up your heart and just listen you might save a life that day oh. you might find an opportunity to change the world that day mm. you might be able to take whatever is their biggest problem and say you know what I can solve that problem one of my friends just told me something that's severely altering his life and i said i can solve that problem tomorrow meet me and i will fix this for you i've got that problem solved for you and this oh. is a serious problem and i can't go into more detail but you just never know what yeah. what if you could solve the problem of the person right in front of you what if you ran a company and you didn't even know people were being kept out of work and you actually listened to somebody who reached out to you in perhaps what you might perceive to be an inappropriate way like maybe they went over everybody's heads maybe they had to go over everyone's heads yeah, maybe yeah. if you listen you'll find a way to change it 
and I have always found that because my mom, my mom was brilliant. And I see that my sister logged in here somewhere. Mary. Hi, Mary. <laughs> um, we had a brilliant mom. Thank God for that. We didn't have her yeah. enough years. We lost her young, but she was brilliant. And I remember when I was a child, her saying to me, she was always telling me how to stand up for myself. And so was my dad. And she used to say, you know what? When people are being unreasonable, when people are being unfair, you go over their heads because the people in charge are in charge for a reason. Oh. And usually the people in charge are the risk takers. They are the courageous ones. And if you can get to them, they will usually change an injustice if they know about it. Mm. So I think we all have to really pay attention when someone's really banging on our door or when someone's asking for help or when someone's just trying to express what they're going through. Why not pay attention and listen? You might be being handed the greatest opportunity of your own life and you don't even know it yet. But I can tell you one other thing. As I went through this past two years of struggle, when I was having the worst days, I reached out to the people that I know who care about me unconditionally mm. and was grateful for the ones that heard me. But also some of my friends, I hope they're on here, Paul Ford, Billy Ford, Vince Staskell, there's a few climbing on here. Tom, I see a few more on there um, who could hear me. And what a gift they gave me. And guess what? The ones who've been through the most are the ones who can, with humor, turn your day around in a second, you know, because they have that skill. And the ones yeah. who've been through the most, you know, some of my greatest allies and friends have been through far more than me. And, um, they're champions. I have no other way to describe them, but champions, champions of the human spirit. They know how to play. Boy, mm. do they know how to play the game of life. And I'm grateful to them because, you know, we all need somebody who can be strong when we are down. And we can be that for someone else when they are down. And we kind of forget that life is a team effort. And if we're mm -hmm. not hearing people when they're in trouble, we're losing an opportunity, a big opportunity to help them, to be there for them. And then when you do that, not only do you gain a lot of wisdom and strength and courage, but you also gain an opportunity to have a really mighty ally by your side mm. when the cards turn. Because life turns for everybody at some point. It does. And I can tell you from everything I've been through, and I think anybody who's on here who's known me long enough, you're in big trouble and you call me, you can bet I'll be there. I will be there. I show up for my friends and they show up for me. Thank God. Mm. You know? No, I mean, that is so powerful. That whole concept of being a champion for someone else. Yeah. You know, it's, it's you just nailed it. What the most rewarding things in life? You know, oh, we all think, oh, no, we can't give our resources or our help or our energy to anybody else. That is one of the most rewarding, um, fulfilling things you can do in your lifetime. Even, I think my sister's on here, she can attest to this as well. Even sitting beside someone who's dying who you love. A lot of people run from that. They're scared to death uh. of it. It is painful, but also mm -hmm. one of the most rewarding experiences and one of the most growth experiences you can ever have in your life. Why would you run from that moment, that moment that is, you know, we all have this moment, we come into this life, we all have this moment when we go. I wouldn't want to miss that moment for anything in the world mm. to be there to hold the hand of someone I love when they're on their way out of this world you know and so i don't see what people are so afraid of you know i've yeah. been through yeah. the worst of it and I, i've sat there and i've gained so much courage and also i have a whole lot less fear of you know when i was younger i will tell you i had a big fear of dying when i was um dealing with cancer in my early 30s which also by the way was a result of all that i went through as a child so yeah. i got thyroid cancer and when i was going through that i was scared to death because both my parents died young and so i thought oh my gosh i'm so young i i'm gonna die no i don't want to you know i'm not ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was terrified of death 
you know, a few years later, I'm completely healthy, cancer free. And it's not been a few years. It's been a long time. Um, mm. uh, I don't have any fear of that anymore. You know how many people I've sat with as they were dying? I don't fear it anymore. I have no fear of it at all. Uh, I'm not saying I'm ready to go. I'm not ready to sure, go. Sure. Um, but I learned a lot. And I just want to share that with people because I, I feel like I have to say there's nothing to fear. Don't be afraid of people with disabilities. Don't Thank be afraid you. of people's challenges. Don't be afraid of listening to people when they're in trouble. And if they've got to cry, let them cry. It might be the most beautiful opportunity you've had in your life to actually make a difference. Mm. And even just the listening sometimes is, is all they need and it will help you grow. So there's so much to be said for that. Life is a team effort. We're all in this game together. And I think life is going to work a whole lot better when we let out the, let down the walls, open up to the 20% who've been kept out. You know, the game changers, yeah. I call them game changers for a reason. And if you look back at my article and you look back through history, you look at the biggest world changers and you're going to find out, dig deep enough, you're going to find out they had disabilities. Whether they were hidden or not, they had them. And they those did. are the world changers right there. And and often the world savers. Ooh, They've yes. saved the world because they had yes. the courage because they stood up and they did it because they had the fire, they had the belief. And if you don't believe me, go look at the Game Changers article and look up those people. Look up all our presidents and find out how many of them had disabilities. Lots of them. Lot our of longest them term president ever. Our longest ever term president who crushed Hitler. The man had a disability and had to hide it. It's time for us to stop having to hide it. I shouldn't have yeah. to hide my walk. Who cares how I walk? You see me on screen right now? This is what you mostly see on TV, right? Why did anybody right. ever keep me out of work? Because I move a little differently. I still move. And still move. a lot of people find it interesting. So um, why has it ever uh, been an issue? Who cares? It doesn't matter. We should uh, not fear anybody and let everybody have a shot. You know, just... Bring in the game changers and let them play. No, absolutely. It's well, and this whole thing of fear, somebody just put on the screen a moment ago, you know, when you're when you're free of fear, you're truly free, something to that effect. And it's true, you know, when you don't fear. Yeah. And so many times yeah. it's it's a false fear. You know, we've we've concocted this thing. Oh. Yeah. You and yeah. and you just nailed something so important, I think. It's it's and it deserves a whole lot more discussion of how we can help people having empathy. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's when you think of, in this case, specifically somebody with a disability, have empathy, listen, accept, learn. Wow. Oh, I have yeah, become so much was... more of a learner. Oh yeah. You'll learn so much from people who've been through different life experiences than yeah. you. We should all listen to anyone we get a chance to meet in life. We can learn something from everyone. Um, oh, I forgot what I was just about to tell you, but there was a, there was a saying that I wanted to share with you. I'm sure it'll come back to me, but it, there was, a, it was another one that I've held on to through the years and it just went right <laughs> up to my head. Sorry about great that. Great sayings, by the way. No. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there are so a lot of great things. ones out there that remind us. Yeah. They're really, you know, it's amazing the wisdom that's out there. We, this discussion needs to continue for a few more days, not hours, uh -huh. days. You know, we're going to have to. We're going to have to get you back on again because there's so many things to talk about and this the practical wisdom of life yeah um, and to be a game changer i i love that about you in just constantly and i see things from you you know and i'm going yes you know it's it's um oh, oh. i remember the saying now here's what it is the greatest gift you can give anyone is unconditional acceptance. Mm. It is the greatest gift you can give anyone. And when you see the marriages that last forever and the relationships that last and the best friends who stay friends for life, they're the ones who love you on your good days, love you on your bad days. You can get in a fight and you're still going to be friends the next day, or you might not see each other for years, but you get back together and it feels like not a moment has been yep. lost. Yep. You know, you see friendships and relationships like my sister is so lucky she's had a 
a wonderful marriage for many, many years and um, raised some great kids who are definitely caretakers in our world, firemen, mm. airports, and teachers. And, mm. you know, and I, I, I sit there and I look at them and I'm like, they're so lucky to have found someone who loves them unconditionally. You know what I mean? Like yes. that is the greatest yes. gift you can give anyone. Your friends, people, even in the workplace and world is to to really love people for where they are and where they're at. Good days, bad days, and understand. You know, just accept them unconditionally. What, what you know, and try to help each other. You know, hey, if sure. if somebody sure. sees something I need to work on, I, you know, as long as I know they're coming from a good place and they love me, I'm open. I'm all ears. Absolutely. I want to know what I got to work on, and we should all be helping each other get to where we want to be in life because. Life is short, you know, it's too short, so short, you know, and if we can help each oh, other, sure. you know, by the way, somebody just yeah. put up, uh, fear is false emotions appearing real. Oh, that's fear. True. That's true, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. It's it. We got to get our eyes off ourselves. There's just so much of this here and we could change the mm -hmm. world by doing one simple thing, you know, just accepting each other. Yeah. Just accept and you're right what you said before, listening, just being open, listening. Yeah. You don't always have all the answers. You you're nope. not always nope. right about everything. Nope. And uh everyone comes from a different perspective. Yep. You know, I've traveled all over this world to many countries. I've been all over this country. I've known so many thousands of people in my lifetime, I can't even remember them all. But you know what? They all come from a different place. They were raised differently. Yep. They have different beliefs, yep. different religions, different colors, different everything. And their perspective comes from the life they lived up until this moment. So therefore, who are we to say what they should believe or what they should do or how they should handle their situation? All we can do is be open, hear where they're coming from. You know, I, I had a friend over today who explained to me what she grew up with, um, being an Indian woman who grew up in South Africa. Oh. And I had no idea the things oh. they they went through growing up. Growing up, I had no idea. So I'm I'm glad I have this friend to share it with me. Her son has a disability and he wears leg braces like I used to wear. So he now has somebody he can talk to about what he's going through, oh. you know? And um, I'm making sure I don't say names for a reason, but he, you know, he now has somebody to talk to because he's afraid of the same things I was afraid of as a little girl. Wow. And he's going through the same pain I was going through as a little girl. So I understand. I want a gift for him, you know, yeah, I was and when say, I think about on the challenges I've been through, you know, when I was going through cancer, there were a few women who were cancer survivors who were brought into my world by other people and they shared with me their strengths, mm. all the things they learned along the way. They helped me find courage and face the surgeries and face what I had to go through. And they made it the path easier for me because they told me how they did it. And so I feel like we can all help each other in that way. Like we, whatever our dream is, there's someone who knows more about it, who can enlighten us, help us, guide us. There's, and it doesn't always have to be coaches and, no, you know, no, no, no. you don't always have to pay hundreds of dollars to get this help. Reach out to people who know what it is you need to know and ask them for some advice. And those of you who are being reached out to, I know that some some people get overwhelmed by requests. I know that I do. Um, I do the most yes. that I can with the time I have in my lifetime. But I think we all have space at least to help one or two people or yeah. listen and try to connect people. Often I try to connect people to other people because I know this one has a need and this one can help and they both can help each other and learn from each other. So we can connect people and help people find each other. And I think life is, you know, is that kind of team effort. And I hope that um, people will hear this and think about it and try not to be afraid and just open up. You might learn a lot and life might get that much more exciting, interesting, and less scary. Yeah, no. It, I mean, there's just so much rich, rich wisdom here, you know, for mm -hmm. practical living. And if we could just like you said, drop the walls down, start listening, listen with empathetic ears, 
put yourself in somebody else's position. Try to help somebody. I mean, mm-hmm. how can people follow you on social media, just see some of the things you're doing and what you're involved in? Because it's fascinating, really, um, to watch it. Thank you. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook all by my name, which is Eileen Gruba, E-I-L-E-E-N-G-R-U-B-B-A. I also have a website by that name, EileenGruba.com. And uh, usually I'm, if I have work stuff, most of my social media is just about work. So please don't connect for romantic intentions. I'm not interested. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, please don't send me those, you know. Um, but if you want to talk about work or, you know, all those things, reach out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's amazing. Instagram has so much of that going on. It's oh, like, ah, yeah. you know, oh, and, you know, um, it's easy to find me. It's easy to follow my path. I've got some projects in the works that I that I know are going to be game changers. I've got a huge one in the works that I know is a game changer for our community. Mm. Um, It's a powerful piece of history. The screenplay has already won a major award. We got a big producer attached and I can't wait till we get into production so I can hire all these great kids and make the world fall in love with them. I just so excited about it. It, It's all I focus on every day. when I'm not having to do a survival job, I've been writing for, for Lego children's show, um, as my survival job until the industry (laughs) lets me start being an actor again. I hope that that happens soon. I hope everyone can stop fearing the virus and let us get back to work. Um, and in the meantime, I'm writing and creating projects for this fantastic community. And the last two projects that I put out into the world that were created by mostly people with disabilities, projects I produced and was in, both of them won awards all over the world on Mm. micro budgets. So I'm excited for the big, big, big one to go. And and, uh, I appreciate the people who are opening the doors and I hope it keeps happening, especially in our industry. We have the power to change the world. We we change the way people think. We show them how to think. We show them who to include. So I hope our industry keeps opening opening up. I hope they bring in the people who've been in the game the longest who haven't had the shots. And I don't just mean me. I mean nationwide. We've got sure. people with disabilities who've been around for decades who haven't had any real shots. And it's time for that to change and bring them in and let them, let them show you what they can do. You know, it's a fantastic world out there and a lot of really interesting people. It is. Yeah. It really is. And I'm excited about this big, big project. We'll have to have you back on when it gets released to talk about it. And, um, you know, before I don't know, we'll we'll figure something out. But thank you. I appreciate you so much. You know, I know how busy you are thank to take you. time to be with us. You you were the one that uh, the Utah crew said, oh, we got to get Eileen. I said, OK. Uh, and uh, I ended up with the privilege of being able to talk to you. We've got uh, one of our crew members is, is spending her seventh week in the hospital. Oh, no. Battling chronic illness. So, um, and she was really hoping to be here. But anyway, um, no, thank I'm you. Sorry. You are I hate so... being in the hospital. So please send her my love. It's like, I hate being in the hospital. That's something I do not have fun doing. <laughs> I, I'm sending her my sympathy and love. I'm sorry she's having to be in a hospital environment for that long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's uh, but she's you'd love her. She's got the gr- greatest attitude, the great mm-hmm. greatest spirit. Just a she's just so positive. You know, I'm I'm you. amazed at it, and I've learned from her as I've learned from you. And thank you, thank you. Thank Appreciate you, your friendship and all that you're doing. And thank you know, you. we'll do whatever we can to support you and encourage you. Um, thank you. you. Know, well, I appreciate way, but, everything you do. You guys have uh, such a positive, supportive. Uh, talk show here and I'm glad that you're reaching out to all the teenagers in the world who need all the strength and courage they can get right now and well, thank uh, you good job yeah thank you that means a lot coming from you so well we'll see you again soon and take care thank of you thanks for having me